Here's what's making news now around Indiana, brought to you by your Indiana Fever. Well, after nearly a year, Evansville-based Accurite Corporation has completed its acquisition of Germany-based Mefro Wheels GmbH. Accurite says adding the uh, steer, uh, steel wheel supplier doubles its core wheels business, creating a $1.2 billion global company. A new research center focused on difficult-to-treat types of breast cancer is planned for Indianapolis. The Fort Wayne-based Vera Bradley Foundation Center for Breast Cancer Research will include a 30-member team at the IU School of Medicine in Indy. To date, that founda foundation has contributed nearly $40 million to the school in the fight against that disease. In northern Indiana, Marshall County officials have cut the ribbon on the nearly $3 million Argus Manufacturing Center. The facility received $400,000 in regional city initiative funding and is in, in that town's 75-acre industrial park. And the Indiana National Guard has named Colonel Felicia Brokaw, the new commander of Camp Atterbury and the Muscatatuck Urban Training Center in Edinburgh. Brokaw is the first female leader of the training sites and will lead more than 360 troops. Well, downtown Indianapolis, it's a critical economic engine, not just for central Indiana, but really the entire state. With growth comes growing pains and the need to update important infrastructure. Some 30 bridges in the, the section of interstate, that is the I-65, I-70 interloop, are nearing uh, their lifespan, and NDOT is suggesting it all be replaced with concrete barriers added. But a coalition is urging the state to consider alternatives. The stakes are very high, and two people are very active in the Rethink 6570 campaign are here now to talk about it. Indy Chamber Chief Policy Officer Mark Fisher and Sun King Brewing Company President Bob Witt. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thank you Thank for you. having us. Uh, Mark, if you tee this up, the I-65, uh, I-70 uh, split downtown, busiest intersection right in the state of Indiana, uh, enormous amount of traffic daily, but it is deteriorating, 40 plus years old, needs to be replaced. Absolutely, you know, downtown Indianapolis, as you mentioned, is uh, with 4% of all the jobs in the state, 11% of all the jobs, uh, over $40,000 in the state, it is the economic engine of our city, our region, our state, um, it succeeds because uh, the employment base and the employees, employers' access to a wide workforce. And that means we are a regional workforce and a regional economy. So we do need to be thinking about the, the commuter traffic, how we make sure that we get people in and out of downtown. But uh, downtown's not just a central business district anymore. It's seen a lot of reinvestment. A lot of these neighborhoods are coming back after 40 or 50 years when the highways were first put in. And so we need to make sure that uh, whatever the plan is for the North Split and then the system that feeds into the North Split, complements the vision of the community and what we what we want to see for for downtown Indiana. Well, let's talk specifically because the Indiana Department of Transportation uh, has been advocating expanding, adding lanes, right, and yes. adding big concrete barriers downtown. Why why is that a problem? Well, you know, they, they've I, I got to give NDOT credit. They they have given uh, serious consideration to alternatives. They've they've heard from the community that that simply expanding to the right of way uh, limits putting up walls uh, uh, and sound barriers uh, some, is something that the, the community has a lot of concern mm -hmm. about. Um, transportation is fundamentally changing with autonomous vehicles. We need to be thinking, this is a once in, life, uh, once in a generation um, uh, issue, so we need to be thinking of what transportation is like 20 years down the road yeah. and not just simply static tra traffic numbers. Bob, Sun King has a major operation downtown Indianapolis, very close uh, there, obviously. Yep. Your concerns, if with this whole idea of adding lanes, expanding, uh, that stretch? Well, you know, uh, we're in competition as every other company is. Uh, we're also in competition as a city for uh, to get talent, uh, to, to draw, uh, to attract businesses. Um, we are, you know, obviously an employer, uh, so we've got to get our employer, uh, employees in and out, but we're also a destination. Uh, so it's important that we, we have that traffic flow, but we, we need to keep Indianapolis a great place to live, work, and play. Uh, you know, billions of dollars of public and private investment have been made in the city, uh, and we need to continue to grow the city, uh, and not do something that would detract in any way. You think this could take away from investment in downtown, not only business, but the neighborhood? Uh, yes, I was in commercial real estate development and brokerage for 15 years, mm -hmm. uh, and I truly believe any public uh, project of this size should add value to the area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mark, give us a couple of, we only have about a 
and it lets potential alternatives. Yeah. Looking at depressing the interstate is, is one of the Yeah, so NDOT did a, a systems level analysis, looked at seven different alternatives for, for what they could do with the north split and the highway system moving into it. Uh, anything from doing nothing uh, to replacing the existing uh, uh, right of way and infrastructure uh, to expanding. But uh, some, some of the more compelling alternatives are, are depressing the highway, capping it, put, putting the local streets on top like we see up in Hamilton County. Uh, that creates an opportunity to cap it, create public space, create development opportunities. Uh, others are, are completely ripping out the highway and uh, putting them in a boulevard. We gotta be thinking about uh, what impact that would have on our local streets, but uh, we're, we're encouraged that NDOT is exploring alternatives. All right, public comment period is now uh, ending. We'll have much more on this in the coming months to be sure. Mark Fisher from the Indy uh, Chamber, Bob Witt from Sun King uh, Brewing Company. Thank you both very much. Thank you.